What is up guys, welcome finally to your next uh, GameMaker 8.1 tutorial. So I've been away for a while, my computer was in the shops and to be honest I just couldn't be bothered doing tutorials for a bit. I was kind of bored with them. Um, you know, I just wasn't having fun with them in general. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, but I got a comment uh, a few days ago. Uh, the last one was yesterday and it was basically saying that what he or she was basically giving me loads of ideas uh, about new tutorials to do. And one of those tutorials, as you can probably guess by the YouTube video video which you are watching, uh, is AI Paths. So, this is probably the easiest out of around 4 or 5 that are going to be go uh, coming out over the next month or so. And it's basically just, as I said, AI Paths. Um, so I'm using a, an MP Grid for this, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But right now, we just need a single sprite with uh, three sub-images. And this sprite is just going to be called Sprite Main. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into detail about this because I've gone over this a number of times. And um, if you would like to know more about this, more about the uh, the main uh, gimmick interface, you can check out my other videos to talk about it extensively. But yeah, we just need three squares, and this is going to represent our three objects in the game. Uh, the objects that we're going to have in the game is a uh, a solid object, which that's just what it's going to be. So we can use it later. Uh, a player object and an enemy object. The solid is going to be the image 0, our player is image 1 and our enemy is image 2. So now we've got that out of the way, remember to center the sprite and create our first object. Now this first object is going to be called object player. Now obviously first we want to set the sprite, so remember to assign the sprite, sprite main, but obviously if we don't do anything in the create event then it's just going to cycle through our uh, our sprites images. So first we need to set image index to 1 because that is what we want uh, our sub image to be and image speed to 0 because we don't want it to cycle through. So for now we need a grid. So we first need a variable for the grid to be stored in so grid so grid equals mp grid create and it'll come with a number of arguments here. The first the, the first two is left and top, and this is basically going to be the start of it. So we want that to be 0 and 0, so it starts from the top, so it starts from the uh, furthest to left and furthest to the top. So now that we've done that, uh, we need how many cells it's going to have. So we tend to just want... Sorry about that, I had to make a little cut there, I forgot what I was doing. Um, so to do these first these are uh, next two arguments. We first need to figure out what size the cells are going to be in our uh, in our cell grid. So our room right now is 640 by 480 pixels. So um, the size of our cells uh, is probably going to be 32. So we'll leave these arguments right now and just put them zero. And our cell width and cell height, which is the next two, is 32 by 32. So what to do now? is type in room width divided by 32 and room height divided by 32 now obviously this won't work when our room is not of a um, a multiplication of 32 but ours is and it always will be for this tutorial so um, that's fine if it's not you can just set that to whatever you want have as many cells in the room as you want whenever you want but now that's done we need to close our grid and now we need to um, set some objects for our grid. So it's again, it's MP grid, and this time we use another one. It's called Add Instances. There we go. Now this has three arguments. The first one is ID, and that's the ID of our grid, which we've already stored in the grid variable. So all we need to do is type in grid, and that's already got our, our MP grid in it. The second one is what instance we want to add. Now this is on an object we haven't created yet, and this this is going to be object solid. The one that I talked about when we when we were creating the sprite, and the last one is precise. And we want to be precise. It doesn't really matter for this tutorial, but this is basically if uh, if your sprites are more complicated than others, you tend to not want them to be precise because otherwise they'll be stuck on single pixels, which is not something you want in a, maybe a top-down shooter or side scroll. A top-down shooter is what we're going to be focusing on this tutorial, but you can easily modify this to be uh, from side scroll view as well. So now that we've done that, we need to add our object solid. So add another object and just call it object solid. 
remember to assign the sprite again sprite main now as we did as we did before we need to set the image index now because the image image index is already zero we just set that as zero just in case and we set the image speed as zero as well now we don't need to do anything for this because this is just a solid all we need to do is check this solid box so the other uh, objects can interact with it so now that we've added the instances we need to create our uh, enemy so just type in n equals instance create oopsie daisy had a caps lock there uh, 32 comma 32 comma object enemy now forget about the n, e n equals for a minute or so right the instance create uh, it's gonna create an object enemy which we haven't created yet we'll, we'll do that in a second uh, 32 by 32 this is gonna be the starting uh, coordinates of our enemy you can set this to whatever you want just make sure that it's not uh, in collision with a solid object otherwise it won't be able to go through it and the path won't work correctly now the n equals just stores um, what the enemy is right now so now we can edit it so we can just type in with n put in a couple of curly braces and now it uh, we can edit from here so now what we want to put is path update and two brackets and we'll go on to that later but first we need to set up the object enemy so create a new object and just call it object enemy so if I'm going a little fast I'm just trying to get through this video as quickly as possible because I've got some other stuff going on at the moment uh, such as uh, college work and stuff so make the uh, call your new object object enemy and make sure you've assigned the sprite nope not the draw event sorry about that and we want to again set image index equals three equals two this time because that's where our sub images start and image speed equals zero now next we want a step event and again we want to put path update now this is what this is a script that we're going to create now which I haven't really gone over in previous tutorials so this is a new one for me so open a script with this little uh, icon at the top and you'll be represented with this box I'll just maximize it here for you and here is the name so what we want the name is uh, path update not with them braces and uh, not with them uh, brackets because uh, that doesn't count for the name it's fine but now we need to create a path for our enemy so path equals path add this basically creates a new path a uh, new path for us and now I want to do MP path oh so there's it MP grid let's just scroll down so we can MP grid path there we go and the ID of our grid is um it's just grid so that's fine the path what we just assigned here is called path X start is going to be the starting uh, the starting coordinates of our path and that's just going to be our enemy coordinates just put x and y now the goal is going to be our player so the player coordinates you can reference them from object player dot and that will always be the object players variables and the allow allow diagonal which is the last argument uh, is one that we want otherwise it'll go in it'll just be going down and left uh, up and right without any uh, movement uh, along the other axes so that's fine we want uh, allow diagonal and now this is all well and good but we actually want to start the path now so path start and obviously our path is just called path speed this is the speed of your enemy which is going to go out we're just going to put three so that's fine your induction is uh, what your path is going to do uh, so if you're going to do it at the end you want it to make it um, if it's going to if it's got to the end you don't want to restart again you just want to stay there so if you want to stay there we'll just put zero if you put one it will restart from the beginning but uh, which doesn't really work in this path paths the, which you would set the induction for and normally uh, tower defense shooters and stuff like that so absolutely uh, we don't want uh, in fact yeah we do want we do want uh, absolute because uh, we've already set the coordinates here so now if we just, if we just uh, set it down what we're, what we're going to do now is uh, set the depth. So for object player, set the depth as 5. For the depth of object solid, set it to 10. And enemy is going to stay at 0. 
This is to ensure that everything is created in order. The lower the depth, uh, the uh, the uh, higher up the order the object will appear. So it will appear faster than the others. So to start we just need to create a basic, uh, a basic level. So just put in some solid objects here. It's going to be there, there, there. I'm missing a few here, that's not good. Now obviously we haven't got player movement yet, but this is just to test it. So object player is there, and we don't need to create object enemy because that's already been created for us. Let's just test it here. Oh, there we go. That's what I was expecting unfortunately. Now this is because the grid is not a global variable, it's a, global, it's a variable that has been created in the player. So as we did with coordinates, we just put object player dot grid, and that should reference the grid perfectly. And now this should avoid all of these and go towards me. There we go. That is the basics of an AI path right there. Obviously, we want the, we want the movement, so I'll just um, I'll just create some simple movement. I've talked about this before. There'll be a link on the screen now to go to the uh, a quick way of doing the H speed and V speed, but this is just you know a little overview of what we go over in that tutorial so just put three times and two brackets and keyboard check direct odd d if i think it's a first so keyboard check direct odd a minus there we go and that'll set our h speed now what this does is uh, when we're holding the A key, this will equal 1. So 1 minus 0, if we're not holding the D key, that will equal 0. So 1 minus 0 equals 1. So it will be going in the uh, direction of 3, which is what we want at the moment. And then we just we can just uh, copy and paste that. Change the H speed to V speed. Change that to S. And that to W. This might be out of order because I normally do get this wrong a lot of the time. We go that way, and we obviously go the wrong way for our horizontal movement. So if we just change these around, so that is D, and that is A. And there we go. We can safely move around, and the path will constantly edit towards where the player is at the current time. Obviously I haven't set up collisions but we don't exactly want that in this tutorial because we're not going over that. You can look over my other tutorials and we'll go through that extensively. And the final thing that I want to show you just so you know that it's working add a draw event in your object enemy and first we want to draw the sprite again because whenever we make a draw event the sprite stops appearing. So just type in draw sprite, sprite main, the sub image is the second one I want to be at the coordinates, that'll basically draw our sprite again. So this other function, which is incredibly easy, is just draw path. And the path we want is just called path. It's going to be at 0, and absolutely it's going to be 1. So now what this will do is it will show our path, and there we go. So now we can see that it's dynamically changing depending on where our player is. Obviously it doesn't appear when we're in the objects, because this won't go through objects which is why we can't allow it to uh, be created with an object, otherwise it won't work. There we go. And there we go. Automatically goes on whenever we want it to. But yeah, this has been an okay tutorial so far. Um, I don't know how I'm going to sound like in the next few days, because I'm getting braces put in, uh, in my top and uh, lower mouth, so I will sound a lot differently. I will probably sound really stupid, but um, you're going to have to bear with me. I'll try and... Uh, get over the lisp that I will inevitably have and um, yeah I'll be bringing you a lot more tutorials so um, thank you for watching um, it's been alright actually I might start doing I'll, I'll probably start doing a lot more of these but uh, thanks for watching them to like and comment you can comment for other tutorials if you want and if I'm not already doing that tutorial I will comment back I always do I always comment on a uh, on all the comments I receive, it's always nice to see comments and likes as well. And if you want to, you can subscribe. These videos will be going up uh, weekly, I think. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye.